For so long my only dream and wish was to make games, to make people happy by playing my ideas, to introduce them to a world full of mystery, combat and intrigue, to finally make a game that kids from all over the world rage to and to destroy everything they have. Now the first question is how do I start doing that? How I turned from no knowledge in making anything on my own to someone who is comfortable releasing my own game. So the very first thing you have to do is pick your game engine and this is purely based on your opinion of what looks good. Most game engines are free and you can pick them up and start learning. But when you first download any game engine, I would say that most of the people have that strange feeling of fear just by opening a program. Let's say you have an amazing idea that you want to come to life and then you open Unity and it's a bunch of buttons, screens, panels. It all seems so messy. But like with anything that you want to learn, you have to embrace that fear and turn it into curiosity. Maybe ask yourself, hmm, this looks strange, what is it used for? Keep asking yourself questions on how things are done. Let's say you want to add animations, well go on the internet and try to find a tutorial on making a certain animation. And then don't just follow the tutorial, actually try creating something the tutorial didn't show or use it in a different way. For example, if the tutorial showed how to make a character movement animations, you try to make attack animations. So when I started, I went to Google and started searching, watching videos, trying to better understand how game making world works. From random forums to YouTube videos, I was looking as hard as possible to be inspired to learn what it takes to finally have the game of my own, but I quickly discovered that making games is not as easy as I originally thought. I found out to make good video games you need to know something called programming. For me at the time it seemed like writing something that wasn't even understandable needed several years at the university. Now I tried to make games with as little programming as possible and that's when I made my very first game. It was a platformer, you're a ball that needs to reach the end of the level to continue. But as I put countless of hours into making this very odd looking game, I quickly understood that this isn't it. Yes, I'm finally making my own games, but I thought, this looks very ugly, unappealing, and if I'm being honest, no one will ever play this. But that gave me the power and the idea to finally try programming. It motivated me to try as hard as possible to learn as much as I can, so I studied for days, learning very simple stuff like what are variables, functions, interfaces, how to write a loop, a switch and so on, how to add a physics to an object in Unity. I was trying my hardest for this, but I just wasn't getting it. It was too difficult. It was hard. A lot of things just didn't make any sense. Like what the hell is an I enumerator? I was struggling, trying to do one thing that I always wanted. And it didn't matter that I wanted it, because I couldn't do it. I dropped it, thinking that I'm just not good enough to be a programmer. It just wasn't meant to be. And this is where the next lesson comes. If you're just starting to make games and you know programming a little bit, that's great, amazing, your skills will improve as the time goes on. Don't be scared to embrace even a little bit of skill that you have. But if you're like me and don't know a single thing about programming, how do you keep the motivation to keep going and to keep learning? I can assure you not every programmer is a genius or even smart, well look at me. You can learn absolutely everything, you just need patience and time. If you have a wish and a passion to create games, you will persevere and continue learning. But with game development it's even more fun to learn. Let's say you want to know how to move a ball on a surface. Ok, first we need a ball. Well how do we make a ball? Ok, now that I know how to make a ball, I know how to make a floor as well. Ok wait, this ball is in the air and doesn't have any physics. Huh, that's weird. Look up rigid bodies. Ok, your ball now has gravity, which now means it has physics. Wait, your ball falls right through the ground. Why is that? Well, look up colliders. Ok, moving the ball. Use the physics your object is now attached to and we can finally move the ball on a surface. This is a very simple example but it works even on more complex systems that you're making. You go step by step trying to figure out how to do the thing you want. While you're doing this process I would recommend keeping a document on how you did certain things just in case if you ever need a reminder. And writing that process yourself would actually make you learn better. After a year and a half I decided that I did leave things way too early. So out of boredom I realized that I'm not a quitter and I can actually do this. So I started getting more knowledge from everywhere. I bought books, watched tutorials, I took some courses on Udemy. I started several of my own projects trying to create anything from puzzle games to RPGs to pixel art top downs to parkour games to fighting games. I have tried everything. To be good at something you need to give it your all. So I did. I have managed to create every game that I had wished for at the start of my journey. Now the lesson here is to try to make as many projects as you can. I wouldn't recommend trying to make your dream game the very first thing you do. It's going to stop you from learning the right way. 
My tip is, if you want to learn game development, try making a different project for a different system. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's say your dream game is some sci-fi shooter where you have a bunch of loot and shops and ships. Start by making a project where you go on the internet and try to learn how to make a first-person controller. Once you have that, try adding a single gun to it and maybe adding an impact effect, muzzle flash and so on. When you make that, you will kinda know how to go about making a character controller for FPS games. But following that tutorial, that test project will probably be full of badly named scripts and game objects that you don't know the full use for. Now when you're creating your dream game, you already have more knowledge on making that. So it will be cleaner, better and more efficient. Even if you have to watch that tutorial again, there will be more understanding on how things work. And if you want to make shops for the game, for example, make a different project where you go on and try to make a shop thing work. Watch tutorials again, make some scrappy looking no textured shop. It is about the functionality, not the looks in this case. You will take care of the looks in a different project. The main goal is to learn. For example, that's what I did when I wanted to learn animations the best I could. I had multiple projects where I tested everything Unity's animator had to give and it helped me create animations for my very own game and even more so for the boxing game that I wanted to make. It improved my skills because those projects were all dummy projects made just to learn. I had an RPG project that I used to learn which you will probably know if you watched my videos in which I made an AI controller that can attack you, chase you and patrol you. I even made a tutorial for it. But looking back at it, it wasn't that great. I made a version 2 recently of that script for my zombie game and now zombies are way cooler than ever, the animations are seamless and now you can say that I learned. So don't be afraid to start a project just for learning. If you're just starting, there's a plenty of cool stuff you can first go through before starting your dream game. Trust me, that dream game of yours is worth the wait. Now what about losing motivation? You're creating your dream game and you just feel like crap. The game doesn't feel interesting anymore and you've tested your own game so many times that you lost all the fun you think you had. And that's where other people can help. Sharing your current progress with someone shows someone what you did because they will try it for the very first time and tell you exactly what you need to hear. Should you continue or should you not? Don't feel like, okay, nobody likes my game, it's such a waste of time. Nothing is a waste of time if you spend that time learning. Also, another thing I like to do is switch projects for a bit. While I'm making my dream car game, I also was kinda losing motivation. So I started a project in a completely other direction where I added first person controller and zombies and zombie bosses and parkour and grappling hooks. And once I made all of that, I kinda went, God, I missed my car game. So I went back into it and had one of the biggest motivation boosts ever where I created a brand new game mode that is easily the most fun game mode of the entire game. So don't be afraid to take breaks, to start something off on the side because it will power you to the original journey. Also, writing a document on how you want your game to be is a very good idea. But if you're a solo developer, you will most likely change opinions quite often and add the next interesting thing you see. And that is good. Use that to make stuff that you're interested in. I finally understood how you need to approach the things you want. You have to give yourself to it. You have to make it a mission to achieve it. And you have to work hard for it and it's not going to be easy. After a year and a half, I can finally say that I'm proud of the way my game dev skills are going. So much so that I'm determined to finally put some of my work in the world. My bread and butter, Racer Mania. My very own dream car game. And I believe you can do it too. Start learning today and make your dreams come true. And also subscribe if you like the video, like, comment and I will see you in the next one.